What we are about to show you was the absolute showstopper at the expo in the motorcycle section and we can see why. It's absolutely gorgeous. The question is, does it stand up to the hype? Here's Kailash Menon and here's the Royal Enfield Thunderbird. 2002 came in the Thunderbird. It looked nothing like the Bullet. This was a cruiser, not a thumper. It had an avial engine, high-rise handlebars, an angular tank and brakes where they belonged. Yes, Royal Enfield finally managed to slot the brakes on the right side quite literally and as a result, a new breed of riders who were sceptical of buying a conventional Enfield jumped in and joined the club. And now a decade post its birth, it's gotten blacker, bigger and better. It's black because you get a wicked looking powder coated engine and you got three paint schemes to choose from which are also black. It's big because it's no longer 350cc. In fact, fixed to the frame is a 500cc engine. It's better and reliable and trouble free because it's the same engine that does the duty on the classic 500. Power output you ask, this one to fuse are 27.2 bhp and wrenches out 41.3 newton meters of torque. So when you twist the throttle, you take off. The structural skeleton is much the same, which is a bit of a letdown. The only design difference, your legs will hug a fatter tank. Now it's got a 20 litre fuel tank. What that means is petrol pit stops would be the last thing plaguing your mind on a long ride. And the folks at RE claim that on a full tank of fuel, it could munch down 500 kilometers, which if you ask me, is very good range. But you know what the best bit is? The tank itself. I mean, it doesn't look big, bloated or bulky from any angle. The design guys have done a great job of containing this massive tank along with the contours of the motorcycle. And look at this bike from any angle and the tank just blends in beautifully well. And you know what's gotten more beautiful? The ergonomics. They are much better too. For starters, you sit pretty low slung, so this bike will fit fine for shorter guys too. The foot pegs, they have been moved forward from the previous bike, so you sit in a chair-like position. The high-rise handlebars meet your hands comfortably without straining your shoulder. What I'm trying to say is, you could ride this bike for miles and miles without getting tired or twitchy. The ergonomics are sorted. Yes, the ergonomics are spot on, but at high speeds, things do get a bit rattly. Now, one of the biggest problems that have been plaguing RE for a long time is high speed vibration and this bike is no different. It vibrates and rattles like hell. You could feel it get all buzzy on your uh, foot pegs. Not so much on the handlebars, but on the foot pegs. And uh, that is a bit of a glitch. Other big change, a 55 watt projector headlamps with a godly halo ring. The rear gets LED tail lamps and the tailpipe and the odometer is a welcome change too. Now on the old end field, the only way to check whether it was time to refuel was to take the tank lid off, give it a few shakes and peek inside. But I believe the newer end fields, they do get a fuel gauge and thank God for that. But this one really is up in the game. You know why? Because it's gone digital. Yes, you heard me right. It's got digital display. I mean, switch it on and it tells you a lot of stuff like it's got two trip meters. It tells you the time. It tells you the average um, fuel consumption. And, you know, even on the analog front, it looks pretty groovy with the old blue-red combo. Functional changes, flatter front forks and twin discs. Now, another problem that REs have been grappling for long is bad braking. But I can't seem to find a fault with the Thunderbird 500 because it gets twin disc brakes. And as a result, the rider feels a lot more shorter, a lot more confident at high speeds because he knows when he does clamp down on the brakes, this thing comes to a full stop. So it's definitely a step up. It's pegged as a highway cruiser and priced at 1,75,000 rupees. The big question, is it worth it? So here's the thing. I mean, the design DNA, it is pretty much a Thunderbird. It is more evolutionary than revolutionary. But here's the thing, the add-ons are quite functional. Twin disc, digital display, a fatter tank, a bigger engine. So here's the deal, if you have 1,75,000 rupees sitting pretty in your bank account and you need a ride to fix your weekend wanderlust, this is it.